So the first workshops we held were in Lambeth, in Sunny Hill Children's Centre. How did you feel about those, Terry, when you came as our assistant? Um, being there, I thought it was very nice to have like all women as part of the, the workshop and getting to see the different cultures yeah. of all the different people there. We also used a lot of different materials and what did you find the most fun material to try? For me it would have to be the string because it was very interesting you can use it to attach it to different parts of your body like your like your knee or your your finger to make a ring and all of those things. And of course then we were looking at the actual meaning of the project the kind of story behind it. And it was interesting what Miriam was doing. Yeah, so with Miriam, um, she was basically explaining the meaning of the project to another woman who didn't actually speak English. And of course, people also find it easier to talk while they're making things, you know, the plaster boats and stuff. Uh, so the conversation was very lively and fun. And wasn't it interesting what Miriam had to say? It was. I mean, Miriam described how, in a way, the kind of symbolic aspects of the project, that it was very much about exploration. It could be to do with the body described as a vessel as well. And, um, and I think she made some very kind of meaningful remarks about that. Miriam was also very interested in the material aspect of the project, you know, and she herself is very skilled and can use a lot of different materials. And I think she found that the range of stuff, the fact you could work in plaster or textile or board or card or whatever, was also something that made it just more accessible for people. Yeah, absolutely. And um, also, what was Shoran's part in the project? Well, Shoran, Shoran Jiang is a Chinese artist who, who lives in London and um, she is a participating artist. She's part of Odyssey Group and her work was very much, and we'll see it later on in the film, very much about the role of destiny. But she spoke also about her feeling of that her body, in a sense, was like a vessel. Um, and again, that it wasn't just about boats. The project of Odyssey is not about maritime journeys. It's about journey of any description, whether it be to space or to another culture or internal journeys of, of learning and experience. And this is Sarah and um, she's from Eritrea and she just loves making things. Yeah, I think that's right. And it's that combination of thinking about ideas and making things that really appeals. At the Liverpool Irish Centre, it was really lovely to see the children engaging in the workshop and using different materials to make whatever they liked. Yeah, even the really tiny children. You know, I think there was one kid who was only about two years old and she was joining in and really enjoying it. So for this next workshop, how did you come across the Bakoda Arts Centre in Liverpool? Well, I mean, I knew that the Chinese community in Liverpool was one of the oldest Chinese communities in the country. And since this project is so much about um, the experience of the movement of peoples, it seemed very natural to involve them along with the Irish. Uh, and we had a great time there. So the making of the island, why did you choose polystyrene? Well, because we had kind of one day to make a big installation and polystyrene was the only thing we could work on so quickly. But it was crazy.
the advantage of using polystyrene was that we was able to carry it and place it into the exhibition quite easily. So who were the other artists that were involved? Well, there was Jane Skeed, uh, who's a London-based artist whose work is very much about language and abstraction. And then Pamela Sullivan, who is a Liverpudlian artist, who is very well known for her work about favelas. And Mari Mayers, who made her boat about her own journey. And then, of course, Shoran Jiang, who came up with us and helped to install the exhibition and delivered tours, installing her work. And then Sebastian Calwy, who is not, not only makes artwork, but he's a published author and he's a GP. Wendy Williams, who actually works at Tate Exchange Liverpool. And Audrey Mullins, who is an Irish artist based in London. You had a particular way in which you introduced the project to the invigilators and the public. How did you do so? Well, there's one particular piece, Age of Exploration Spice, which is basically a landscape in a box which is made with spices. And I would ask people to lean in and smell. And it was a great way for people to begin their journey in the exhibition because it spoke to everybody. And when we had the school visit, it was really lovely to see the children really getting involved and using the magnifying glass to really look at your artwork. That's right, because the work is fragile, uh, but I do want people to get in close, so without touching, and this is a great way of doing it. Um, and so magnifying glasses were provided throughout the exhibition space. It was good to see the children reading the stories for each piece of your artwork. I think that's right. I think having a, an accessible story for people to read is very important and it makes it fun. It was really good to see the children adding their artwork to wherever they wanted it to be, whether it, it was on the, the trail or actually on the island. That's right. And, uh, and our young friend from Liverpool came down and brought his boat that he'd finished at home. Um, so once people were finished their workshops, they could put their boats or vessels, whatever they'd made, they could either attach it to the island or they could use the waterways that we made with wool. Uh, and it, it made the exhibition really quite lively and fun. And we showed the visitors this very interesting app called Clone, where you can scan your boat that you made and then it will turn into an augmented reality pop-up. Yeah, that was really great fun and it was so easy and it's a free app, so it's accessible for everybody. People had a lot of fun with that and it's playing with the digital and the material together, which made it a very fun interactive event. It was, it was really great when we had the artist join our presentation as well and uh, Mari Mayers talking about her work and what it meant to her and how she put it together. Uh, and then Pamela also describing her work and the meaning of, uh, of her work. A fascinating description of what the sampan was and what its origins were and also a very kind of meaningful look at what it is today, where, what it is like for people when they have to migrate and when they have to move and the challenges they face because displacement is a huge issue in the contemporary world. So what was the presentation that you done with Sebastian? Well, Sebastian, who's a doctor, came and we discussed 
the impact of migration and the movement of peoples on health and welfare and had a very meaningful discussion which also included Adi Lehrer from British Red Cross. So we did an awful lot of things in the project and we had virtual reality training. How did you find that, uh, Terry? I found that to be very useful and it was very nice to see the people using um, this different medium, still creating artwork but just in a different way and really getting involved. And we had a discussion on the literary aspects of Odyssey at the library. And finally, on Slavery Remembrance Day, uh, it was the big moment to showcase the digital artwork that I created uh, during this project. So what was the reason why you used the portal imagery for both your mixed media work and the VR work? Well, because I guess th there's an obvious maritime connection, the portal conjures up the image of boats and windows from boats, but it's also a way of, of focusing the viewer on a lens, uh, a particular landscape, a particular seascape, a particular meaning. Um, I, I really love that circular imagery and it's, it's also kind of cyclical, uh, like an experience of life. When we carried the polystyrene island all the way to the open eye gallery across the dock, um, I placed the pop-ups in this, going in the same direction leading up to the open eye gallery. That's right, and it created a sort of pathway between Tate and the open eye gallery. So what was Dr. Gabriella Mackel's connection to the project? Well, as a paleoanthropologist, she's particularly interested in the earliest evidence of humanity and how we moved across the globe. In fact, if you say to Gabriella, oh, where are you from? She'll say, I'm an African. We're all Africans. We all came out of Africa. So it's a very interesting dis discussion to have in the context of the movement of peoples and how this is considered culturally and socially and politically at the moment because her message is one essentially one of unity that you know we are all human beings and we have all derived from one place and we have always journeyed across the globe um, we have all gone through our odysseys and that's a central part of the human experience